Good morning, welcome to CTI News. Electronics retailer Dick Smith is a step closer to being wound up, with reports claiming the company is set to go to receivership. Dick Smith shares have been suspended from the ASX. It comes just after the group ended trading and was refused further credit with bankers NAB and HSBC. The collapse of the well-known electronic store stunned the financial community. Anchorage paid $115 million to Bullworth to acquire Dick Smith. It filled him on the stock market and less than 18 months later is worth an astonishing $520 million. Anchorage made a fourfold return and they call this the biggest private equity heist of all time. It looks like the company was filled on overly optimistic earnings assumptions and those earnings revealed to be unsustainable. Now thousands of jobs are on the line. Here's a report on the field by Daja Nobukas for further explanation. Yes, you're right, Hadi. The scandal made the headlines of newspapers and internet sources as well. Dick Smith being brought by Anchorage, the huge private company at a total of $74 million was sold by $520 million. The scheme adopted by the company of devaluing inventory and selling as high price later on backfired and questioned the existence of the company. With the corporate failure that resulted preceding the investment decision blunder made by the management, this disaster could have been avoided. It is also argued that Anchorage was to be held responsible since all companies always plan an exit and here in the trial to place save by shifting stores instead of opening them, Dick Smith went into liquidation. It is revealed that Dick Smith is not the only player in this bankruptcy scam. Anchorage has reportedly been involved in conspiracies such as when it bought Burger King of New Zealand from 2009 and 2011. Soon headlines highlighted Burger King facing financial problems which according to reports made it face $2 million loss in 2012, $4 million loss in 2013 and $7.5 million loss in 2014. Moving on to employees being the next stakeholder who are actually not fixed on how much longer they will be working at Dick Smith. They have been only told that it will be business as usual. They were annoyed when customers asked them when Dick Smith was going to be closed. According to ASIC, all Australian employees' entitlements will rank as priority unsecured claims ahead of the secured creditors and are expected to be paid in full. Employees have even printed an A4 sheet paper writing what they thought was going to happen and have also replied to the customers' queries by simply saying that they did not know when Dick Smith was closing. The real victims are actually the workers of Dick Smith, which is around 3,300 workers employed who now have an uncertain future and causing a rise in social distresses and economic problems for this huge job loss. Employees have even printed an announcement and posted it in the showroom asking the general public if ever they knew a job opening, do not hesitate to contact them. This will show how desperate they were. Over to you, Hadi, with the rest of the news. Let's now move to analyst Jonathan Lee and Brian Jamala for warning signs and consequences of the scandal. The most obvious warning sign of the scandal was the drastic fall of Dick Smith's share prices in the stock market. In 2013, Dick Smith was worth $530 million and his shares traded as high as $240 by January 2013. However, soon after, the share prices experienced a 70% drop in trading as low as 20 cents. The falling prices continue to persist by the fourth day's made out of the stock market. But when analyzing the annual report of this made, it was found that the downfall of the share price did not come as a surprise. From the information in the annual report of 2015, we can find this made debt and liquidity ratio. The gearing ratio was found by dividing the total assets by the total liabilities, which was found to be 67%. Meanwhile, the working capital ratio is found by dividing the current assets by the current liabilities, which gives us a ratio of 1.23 to 1. This figure means that 67% of the firm's total assets have been financed with them rather than by the internal firms and had been struggling to make sure that them since there was only $1.23 of current assets for every one of current liabilities. High level of debt and poor liquidity was the top line that preceded store coming down Furthermore, on 30th November 2015, Dick Smith informed the ESF that he had to amend his inventories, which dropped by 20%, namely a $16 million write off. These were mainly all inventories which needed to be adjusted for their net realizable value in the IS2. It can be said that aggressive earnings management has been applied since prior to the announcement. All the stock was still being reported as assets. Moreover, Dick Smith had also undergone heavy discounting when in the month leading to Christmas sales, he had discounted some of its private level products by 97.5%. 
His great eyebrows are thundering in years when he arrived at a retailer here recording a man dead by the worthy suicide. The fallout is devastating for the retailer's thousands of workers. 3,300 staff might lose their job. Lately, Ferrer Hutton revealed he could not find a buyer for the Smith. Even the Big Smith on the street can find someone to buy what's left in Big Smith Company, the reputation of the company is at stake. It is unethical for Big Smith to leave hundreds of customers with what's left in the car. As this case is still current, Big Smith will definitely suffer from decrease in future sales and won't be able to maintain the foothold in the market. This will further reduce the competition and encourage prices to go up. Big Smith also sponsored an epilepsy action a Australian charity and was one of its major sponsorship. Now, the charity is struggling to find a sponsor to fulfill the financial commitment of $200,000 that Big Smith was supposed to give. The management of Big Smith has undertaken any management to really address the company in the eyes of the investors. By writing down its inventories and selling them at a high price, this appears as a profit in the account. Big Smith also engaged in heavy discounting to boost its sales volume. Over and above that, the company did not have stock and had opened various new outlets. This is how the effect of making Big Smith appear as a company with growing sales with big profits. As the write down causes profit to be trade, therefore, it attracts investors to invest in Big Smith. Shortly after, Anchorage quickly sold 80% of the company before the release of its annual report and the over 10% few months later. And deniably, Anchorage did not plan the company to be a going concern. A commitment to public interest can keep this myth on the ethical side of the legitimacy theory. We will now join Wendy Lam and Yuri Shayawa to assess who were responsible related to accounting disclosures and earnings management. Anchorage, 
it valued inventories down by $60 million to be good because of acquisition of $312 million. However, according to Woolworths number, Anchorage actually valued inventories upwards at least $66 million. Its plant and equipment also faced similar disclosure issues, whereby according to Anchorage, it valued plant and equipment down by $55 million to be good because of acquisition of $65 million. However, based on Woolworths number, there was actually a revaluation upwards of $40 million. The Lord was the auditor for Woolworths and Anchorage in 2013. Woolworths final report shows the SNIC asset write downs and reform costs of $120 million were booked for June 30, 2012. Anchorage, however, has been accused of misleadingly discrediting inventory and plant values. It did not trust inventory balance of the SNIC when it acquired the business and inventory remained with the US until the business failed. This led to conclude that inventory balance in the first part of the network is false. Thanks, Lucia. The astonishing implosion of Dick Smith will inevitably provide lessons of how not to run a retail business. It will also make investors even more cautious of buying from private equity and probably ensure private equity firm Anchorage Capital will never be able to use the share market again to exit an investment. It is remarkable that two years after listing a valuation of $520 million and less than five months after reporting it, $37 million a company with a sales base on $1.3 billion and net debt of over $40 million should place itself into voluntary administration. Was it ever worth $520 million? Obviously not. Thank you for your attention. It was CDR News with Harley Jew. Until next time.